So welcome to this final video on alkyne hydration. Uh, this video goes into more depth on ketoenol tautomerization uh, and tautomerization in general uh, and describes the mechanism of tautomerization in both acid and base. So uh, if you've watched the video on, on uh, the intro video on alkyne hydration, you'll know that tautomers are constitutional isomers that are in equilibrium with each other. Uh, if you're coming to this video from somewhere else, this is a good place to start. Um, there are actually a lot of examples in organic chemistry of molecules that are constitutional isomers of each other, but are somehow in equilibrium. Uh, these things are not separable from each other. Uh, in any case where an equilibrium can be established, the enol example on the left will isomerize to the keto isomer on the right and vice versa. Um, and to distinguish these things, uh, from, you know, let's grab, grab, ooh, whatever I did there, grab all of the things on, on the screen, you know, to distinguish, uh, to distinguish between tautomerism and resonance, or, you know, resonance, things that are in resonance, uh, The, the resonance contributors are not actually real. They're, they're, you know, there's only one structure. But in, in tautomerization, tautomerism, what we actually have are structures that are in equilibrium with each other. Contribute. So both structures, you know, both structures both structures on the tautomerism system can exist and can be detected. What we're going to learn uh, on the next two screens when we talk about the mechanism of tautomerization is that in addition to be conjugate, uh, or in addition to being uh, constitutional isomers of each other, most cases of tautomers uh, involve situations where these two structures share they share uh, a conjugate acid. they also share a conjugate base. So that means most examples of tautomers you know, involve moving protons around. So again, they're not resonance structures, or resonance structures only Resonance structures only involve different goodness, arrangements of, not if, of electrons. Resonance structures only, you know, involve different arrangements of electrons, or tautomers involve different arrangements of the atoms themselves. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about how ketoenol tautomerization occurs in acid. What we will find is that the keto and enol tautomer share a, a conjugate acid. Uh, and the conjugate acid looks like this. Actually, I want most of these arrows to look like equilibrium arrows, because these are equilibrium processes.
here we have in the middle our shared conjugate acid, uh, which has two different resonance forms, one that looks more like the enol tautomer and one looks more like the keto tautomer. And so you can get the uh, idea then of what's actually happening. So to draw the mechanism from enol to, to ketone, which is the, the relevant direction for uh, alkyne hydration, uh, we start by a proton transfer uh, from the alkene in the enol acting as a base and a proton transfer using water or, or hydronium as our acid, generating this carbocation intermediate. And so you, you this type of uh, arrow pattern shouldn't be strange to you because alkenes are known to react with strong acids to make carbocations. And in this case, the more stable carbocation is where the oxygen is, it's resonance stabilized. And then all we need to uh, form the, the keto tautomer is to have one more proton transfer. My arrow to look like this. Uh, and so we pick up an extra proton. Uh, the water in the, in the solution picks up the extra proton uh, and form the keto tautomer. You may be wondering uh, why the alcohol functional group in the enol is not uh, our base. You could protonate that, but then you would find that that, acid, uh, that conjugate acid is not resonance stabilized, uh, and so it's not actually uh, the, the most basic position. If you want to look at the, the mechanism in reverse, we certainly can. I'm actually just going to copy and paste. Uh, we're going to remove some of our arrows here. Remove some of our things. Uh, and honestly, this runs in reverse much like it ran forward. So the keto tautomer picks up an extra proton to form its conjugate acid. And in this case, there's, it's pretty obvious there's only one basic position on the, the ketone. Uh, a conjugate acid has a resonance structure that looks like a carbocation. And we know that in acid, carbocations can be deprotonated at the next carbon over to form a pi bond. So this this step here looks a little bit like the end of the E1 elimination. Uh, and so it shouldn't look that unfamiliar to you. So there we go. Uh, ketoenol tautomerization in acid, sharing a conjugate acid. When we look at the ketoenol tautomerization in tautomerization in base, we're actually going to uh, do some, something that's a little bit similar, uh, though of course we're in base, so uh, we're not going to have conjugate acids, we're going to have conjugate bases. So if you remember a couple of screens ago I said that uh, tautomers also share conjugate bases, see what these look like. Uh, here's our first conjugate, first conjugate base, and it has a resonance structure that looks a little bit more like the keto form. One hydrogen here, anion. That's all right. resonance arrows. I will draw my equilibrium arrows. And so like under acidic conditions, we had a shared conjugate acid. Uh, in basic conditions, ketoenol tautomers and, and all tautomers have, a sh have shared conjugate bases that are related by resonance or that, that are the same but look different, but because of resonance. Uh, and as far as the mechanism goes, 
we have hydroxide anion as our base. It takes away the, the OH proton on the enol, makes our conjugate base, which has a different resonance form that can then react with water. Water is acidic or, or water can be acidic. Uh, and we end up with that proton It would look like that uh, proton moving to the uh, position neighboring to the ketone uh, and just like in the uh, acidic case uh, I can draw the mechanism in reverse but starting with Starting on the right side from the, the, the keto tautomer, I don't want to oh, I don't want to redraw things in, in a different order, but I've got it set up nicely so we can compare. Uh, starting with the keto tautomer, we hydroxide anion. You'll notice it's exactly the same steps, just depends on which side you start with. Deprotonates, takes away the proton, proton transfer. We make the conjugate base that has its resonance contributor that looks more like the enol, and then it picks up uh, another proton from water. And there we go, the ketoenol tautomerization mechanism in base. Right here at the end of this video, I just want to take a moment and show you one other example of tautomerization. Uh, tautomerization can occur, uh, ketoeno tautomerism and, and similar tautomerism can uh, occur in other kinds of molecules. It doesn't require uh, uh, ketones and it can be amides and other functional groups. All you need is some sort of proton that can be moved around uh, through shared conjugate acids or shared conjugate bases. Uh, and so one really great example are the uh, aromatic nucleobases that make up DNA and RNA. So here's guanine, one of the four, and I picked guanine because it has lots of examples. So um, rather than rather than spend a lot of time uh, going through them, I just want to show you some of guanine's uh, other tautomers. Basically, every place where there is a, a double bond to a heteroatom, a carbon, or a nitrogen, we could draw a tautomer moving some hydrogen atoms around. Structure that I've got the guanine label under happens to be what is, is I'm, I'm fairly certain the most stable structure in solution or the most common structure. Uh, but in fact, there are lots of different ways that you can represent guanine. And in fact, some of the different uh, tautomers that you can draw could all be present multiple times. You can move multiple hydrogens around. This concludes the video on tautomerization uh, and a series of videos on alkyne hydrogen. Thank you for watching.